The very first time I ever saw Stinger Boost was actually back at Epic HQ way back in February. Baby Spine absolutely kicked my butt on with Stinger Boost on Crunch. And since then, I've been kind of scared of the card. Now, it works well on Crunch, but does it work with our newest hero, Wraith? Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a Paragon Guide. I am Silfin. In this video, we are taking a look at Stinger Boost, a very unique card in today's meta. Now, Stinger Boost is a 6 CP universal card that has 2 CP of mana on it, has 2 CP of attack speed on it, leaving an actual cost to you of 2 CP that is how much you are paying for the passive. Now, because it doesn't have a fully upgraded bonus like other cards, we have to actually think of this passive as a 3 CP of value cost. It's a value cost instead of actually what you're paying for it. Now, we have to include it because you could use the CP you spent on Stinger Boost to get another card that actually has more stats. So that's why we have to do that. Um, Hopefully that makes sense. Now the actual passive of Stinger Boost is that the next basic attack after an ability cast deals 50 plus 20% of your, of your power every one and a half seconds. So the more power that you have, the more that is going to be added onto the 50 base damage from Stinger Boost when you basic attack after you cast an ability. Now, when we analyze this card, you may or may not agree with the choice that I've made here. I am going to consider the cost of Stinger Boost, the cost of that passive, to be 5 CP because I'm going to include the mana that is built on, onto Stinger Boost as part of the cost. The thing that you kind of want, you that, that you're spending to get this passive. Why? I have not found in my... 8 to 10 games with Wraith so far that you, you that you need to build mana. So with that, I'm going to uh, consider the cost of mana as, as part of something you don't want. So 5 CP of power, therefore, equals 30 power. This 30 power, then, becomes 30 damage on his knock-knock ability with no ability pen. Remember, go back to my, my my recent math video with with Revenant, and you will see that Ability Pen is simply not worth it. So it's going to cap out at 30 damage uh, on his on his knockoff ability, and that is what you could have gotten if you went with another card other than Stinger Boost. On his basic attack, this 30 power equates to 18 damage per shot, not including the effect of basic pen and of course attack speed just makes that able to hit more often now we have to go through th through some scenarios because stinger boost is isn't isn't an easy thing to just say dps this first that it's very kind of a situational thing as it relies on ability cast now in this first scenario, we are going to assume that 180 power is equipped. From my experience, in a whole burst deck where you're only going power, you can get 240 plus power on that deck. It's only going to help Stinger Boost um, in, 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 in the damage department. But 180 power is also quite easy to get in a DPS deck with Revenant, or with, with Wraith, pardon me with some attack speed now we're also going to be looking in this scenario in how in the duration of when you first use your knock knock your first snipe and then you finish off the, the target hopefully with a second knock knock ability so what we're going to do is assume that you use your sonar board to activate stinger boost right off the bat that means that your first basic attack on your hero on, on your enemy hero is going to deal 86 extra damage on from Stinger Boost. That is the 180 power, 20% of that, plus the 50 from Stinger Boost grants you 86 extra damage on this basic attack that you open up with. 
If you did not have Stinger Boost, however, this would only be 18 damage. Now, the next basic attack that, that, that you do after that is it, it, Stinger Boost has no effect. It has zero. But not having Stinger Boost would give you 18 extra damage. Then you follow it up with your Snipe ability. You Animation Cancel that basic, something like that. Stinger Boost would get... would Not having Stinger Boost would give you 30 power. Etc, etc, and you and you go all the way down here, you use another basic attack, you then use you use another basic and then into a into a his nope ability, his back it up ability. Um, and then that empowers that. And essentially when you run the math, when you kind of time it all out, again, um, it, it, I have found it to be fairly reliable for you to be able to get two knock knocks, uh, two Two knock knock abilities off on one target in one engagement, and that's sort of rates burst potential. First knock knock, a whole bunch of basics, and his sonar ward, and his and and his back it up ability into a into a last knock knock. That's kind of like his burst window. It's about a six to eight second window. Now, in total, Stinger Boost during this time gives us 344 extra damage. Not having Stinger Boost, as you can see, would only give us 186 extra damage. That is almost twice as much damage having Stinger Boost than not in this scenario. Basically, from starting with your with your ward, which is actually a pretty good idea, as you may have if you may want to cover one of your flanks with vision into a ba into an empowered basic, you have to wait with another basic because. Uh, Stinger Boost has a 1.5 second cooldown. Then you go into a Snipe, and then you have an Empowered. Then you use your Back It Up ability into another basic, in, into another Empowered basic attack, in, into another basic, and then your Knock Knock is finally off cooldown. Do that into another basic, boom. The potential here is there for Stinger Boost to do great damage. Now, what if we have no power equipped? Basically, in this scenario, we're just taking a look at Stinger Boost face value. What is its potential with no power equipped? Well, you can actually see in the same scenario, Stinger Boost still pays for itself and profits <laughs> with without even having that 20% extra damage. It's pretty, pretty crazy. Stinger Boost looks really, really good uh, in, in in Revenant's first six to eight second window, that first that 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 little bit of a prolonged burst that that Wraith has is really, really good looking. Now we also have another scenario that I am finding myself in more often than you would actually realize. I'm starting to think that that Wraith is picked as a he's definitely a great mid laner but he's also a great off laner you pick revenant as an off lane if you have in my opinion a melee tank support you have a melee jungler they're all melee but a tanky jungler and a tanky melee support and that enables your mid laner and off laner to be ranged in either case if your front line is there, which you definitely need with, with Wraith, he can he can be a sustained force in a in, in in a prolonged team fight. And in this scenario here, you can see we're in a prolonged engagement of about 24 seconds. That's pretty long, but it actually it hap actually happens quite a bit. Um, it, honestly, in, in, in my opinion, um, you there are, you know, a skirmish leads into a team fight, etc, etc. So when you do the same thing and I, you know, I time everything out, I run the math, you can see that there's much more, there's many more knock, knock knocks and we're assuming that you hit every ability, we're assuming that, you know, everything goes perfect. When you actually run the math down here, you can see that Stinger Boost still comes out on top quite significantly. 688 extra damage versus not having Stinger Boost at 498 extra damage. So you can see here Stinger Boost still, it still pays for itself and profits in a prolonged engagement where not having Stinger Boost, all of those normal basic attacks that are benefiting from the power that you have instead of going into Stinger Boost, 
it still pays off. Stinger boost still pays off. Of course, this is you are using all of your abilities um, as much as possible to benefit from Stinger Boost. That is a thing, and you do have to change how you play with Stinger Boost, but the potential is there. Now, I really want to see at what point does Stinger Boost break down, and it seems to be right at the almost no power point. This is the same scenario, a prolonged engagement of 24 seconds. However, you somehow have no additional power built on your Wraith. None. Zip. When you do the math again, you can see that finally, 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 Stinger Boost is not worth it. Not going for Stinger Boost and having that power just naturally built on Revenant and that, that's going on his basic attacks that aren't empowered, it finally beats out. It, it is finally a 25% increase or one, one, one fifth increase in, in your overall damage, but it's really not that far behind. And of course you're gonna have power anyways. So really, Stinger Boost look, is looking so good. Now, I wanted to take this even farther. I was like, I can do more than that, and I can take a more overall look at Stinger Boost and his knock knock ability and his basic attack. That's basically what I did, ladies and gentlemen. And in this scenario here, I've included his basic attack, knock knock, and Stinger Boost DPS. Now, when you run the DPS of all three of those things, and put them against varying amounts of power and varying amounts of attack speed, you can actually see that it it shifts Wraith's natural DPS curve in, 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 in relation to power and attack speed to the a little bit more power. Normally, Wraith is a little bit more of a 4 power to 3 attack speed, so kind of a four-thirds sort of ratio between power and attack speed, but Stinger Boost seems to shift it a little bit more to the power side. It's it's generally speaking a two to one, a little bit of like a three to five attack speed to power ratio. It just makes him, I think, a little bit more reliant on that power. And I think that is ab actually really fantastic. And you can see here that still, if you have Stinger Boost, if you get that nice and early on, it, it does actually work. It really does work. 11 CP of power, and then you start building into attack speed if you have your Stinger Boost on Wraith. It really does work. And as you can see, if we follow this down, it really still likes his attack speed regardless that attack speed has nothing to do with Stinger Boost. So, ladies and gentlemen, in summary, we can see that between two knock knocks, between the cooldowns of of using two knock knock abilities, Stinger Boost can provide about 45% more value than power. That is pretty great. Why wouldn't you want an extra 50% more value for your money? Between two knock knocks, Stinger Boost pays for itself even when you have no power equipped. Basically, guys, that means that you can equip you can equip Stinger Boost at any time in a match, and you know that it will be paying for yourself. It does require that you use your abilities more often, right? So you maybe you have a bit bigger of a mana pool than hero level one. And it it just means that it's a very reliable, easy source of good damage. Now, in a perfect 20 second engagement meaning you use all your abilities at the appropriate times you nail every single ability and every and every hit which by the way would only help stinger boost more over not having it stinger boost can provide up to 30 percent more value than power so if you find yourself more in sustained engagements where you're in the back line just firing away like a ranged fighter that Wraith seems to be great value there. Now, in a perfect 20 second engage, 24 second engagement though, Stinger Boost is 20% less valuable than power if no power is equipped. 
So what this kind of means is that yes, you can get Stinger Boost whenever you want, and it seems to pay for itself in shorter engagements. Once you have a good amount, a, a fair amount of power, not too, too much, you can actually get Stinger Boost and it will still pay for itself in long-term engagements. Now, the last point that is, I, I think what, what 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 really helps us change the way that we build our, our Wraith decks is that Stinger Boost, if you are equipping Stinger Boost with Wraith, it changes his his power to attack speed ratio from 4 to 3, 4 power for every 3 attack speed, to 2 power for every 1 attack speed. Which, in my opinion, in my experience so far, my, I don't know, 8 to 10 games with him, it seems to be better suited. Between my burst deck, which is all power, a ridiculous amount of power, and my DPS deck, which is, it's a lot of attack speed. It's somewhere in between, and I think that this really, really, I think, showcases um, the the nice blend of burst and DPS that Wraith can have with a great, car with a great card that synergizes well with his kit. You you like you need that good amount of, of burst that the two power to every one attack speed will bring, but your but a third of all the stats we'll be building is attack speed, which still means that his consistent damage, which from a from a pretty hard hitting basic attack, will still be able to provide good DPS. Hopefully, guys, this makes sense. Hopefully, that kind of illuminates some some interplay between Stinger Boost and Wraith, and hopefully if you use Stinger Boost, uh, this content will help you build your deck a little bit more informed and a little optimize your deck. Please let me know down in the comments if you have any questions or if there's anything I missed or that you think I'm wrong about. I would love to get your feedback and just help everybody learn a thing or two. Please like this video if you like it, dislike it if you dislike it, share the community, and of course, guys, subscribe. If you guys like this content, especially if you found it useful, please subscribe so I can do it for you in the future. If you would like to support me and what I do on a regular basis, please consider going over to my Patreon account where you can make a monthly pledge to support what I do and reap some pretty good rewards. Till next time, like always, guys, stay optimistic and positive.